So educational podcasting is not for the faint of heart. We're going to talk about that in a global conversation with Jeff Bradbury next on the EdTech Vlog. Hi, I'm Dr. Matt Harris, and this is the EdTech Vlog. Today, we are honored to get a chance to talk to Jeff Bradbury, who's a, an internationally renowned educational podcaster, ed tech coach, and all around good guy. Just ask him. Um, so Jeff, do me a favor, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll talk about some of the cool things that you're doing. Sure. Um, thank you so much for having me on the show. It is great to be here. Uh, my name is Jeff Bradbury, and I've been in education for the last 18 years. I spent the first uh, 15 or so as a music educator. And about eight years ago, I created a podcasting network called TeacherCast. And now it is, uh, it's doing really well. You can find everything over on TeacherCast.net. We've got podcasts, uh, videos, professional development, you name it. Uh, we've been doing a lot of great stuff over there. And currently, I'm an instructional technology coach in New Jersey. Excellent. So let's. Um, so TeacherCast is really interesting because you have a really strong following, and you go to all these conferences, and you you use the platform to talk about a, a lot of interesting things. Before we we kind of get to those interesting things that you talk about, give us a little bit more around the podcast elements of TeacherCast. What is what does that look like? What do you talk about? Like, why why should people listen? Sure. Uh, eight years ago, we started the TeacherCast podcast, and, and originally it was supposed to be a roundtable discussion where we would bring on various topics, and you know, it really was a way for me to learn about different ed tech tools. I would bring on people to talk about flipped classroom and you know what was going on in Microsoft and Google, mm -hmm. and from there we expanded into two shows. I started to do a show with a bunch of ed tech companies. And then that expanded into three shows. And we started doing one on tech coaching. We started doing one on, on uh, like, you know, we, had, we have a Microsoft show. We started doing podcasting for the New Jersey Educators Association. And right now, if you're on Apple Podcasts, we've got actually nine feeds going. And you can learn anything that you want to over on TeacherCast. How popular is TeacherCast? I mean, I know this is a point of pride for you. So we're going to give you an opportunity. Like, just give us some numbers. Give us some impressive stats around TeacherCast. Sure. Teach, uh, you know, in the last eight years, we've been able to work out over a thousand podcasts. We've had over 500 ed tech companies on. We've helped out, you know, tens of thousands of educators, tens of thousands of students. Uh, you know, eight years ago, we started, ed, you know, I was one of the core members that started EdCamp New Jersey, um, did that for a few years at the max. Ed, we actually had a full ed camp that had over 950 educators show up. It was an amazing, amazing event. One of my proudest moments was when the police came and told us we couldn't have any more people in the parking lot. I absolutely love that. Um, TeacherCast has been responsible for, a, we, we did a show on what is an ed camp. And the, the story I like to tell is six months later, I actually had a phone call from somebody. He says, hey, I just wanted to let you know, I listened to your show and I went out and we're actually doing ed camp Buffalo right now because of your podcast. Um, I love those types of stories, but really, you know, it's, it's been given us the opportunity to work with so many different, different people from Google to Microsoft to Apple to you name the ed tech company, you know, we're, we're tens of thousands of people on Twitter. Um, it, it's really, really nice. Um, we've been doing some amazing things over there. And, uh, and I think right now we're in the top 50 for all educational websites on the, uh, the teach 100 list, which it's actually really like the Teach 1500 list. They wow. got to rebrand that thing. But to, wow. to be in the top 50 of that list and you see all your peers over there, um, it, it's, it really is you know, awesome to see what the, uh, what, what the global educational community has, uh, has taken to it. So let's, let's talk about some practical things that people can, can learn from you. Because I know you help people out quite a bit with podcasting. And I know the podcast element of this is something that is uh, one of the crown jewels of kind of the, the teacher cast network. What, what are some tips that you could offer to kind of want to be podcasters? Because we know a lot of people out there are kind of wanting to jump in here, but they, 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 need, they need the right start. So what are, the, what are tips for some want to be podcasters? You know, in podcasting world, there, I, I always look at this in two different sides, right? We, we do educational podcasting, which we talk about in the classroom. Yeah. And I call it professional podcasting, which is in the studio. And I always stop and say, when I say professional, that has nothing to do with money. That's just separating the studio from the classroom. In professional world, my, my advice is simple. You know, start at 
just talk, you know, have a conversation. I always say this to my, to my listeners. Um, you know, this isn't an interview. Like I, even what we're doing right now, I don't consider this an interview. This is just a great conversation. Yeah. Know that the next one is going to be better. The next one's going to be better. I'll, I'll give you a quick story before I go forward. My first 50 episodes, I didn't once give my name on my show. It's just the way I am. It's just the way it works. My, my whole MO is I want the guest to shine. I want the content to shine. That's, that's the orchestral conductor coming out of me is let, let the music be the guest. I, I don't need to be saying anything about myself. Um, on the other hand, as an educator, the educational podcaster defines the word podcast as literally, I just want to take out my phone and make audio or video. So how do I do this for free? How do I just create stuff with my kids? They're not looking for microphones, bells, switches, mixers, compressors. They don't need any of that stuff. And my advice for them is just start. Just, just create a great project. Take a video of it. Learn from it. Do it. Have your kids use the simple free video or voice recorder apps. Screencasting applications like Screencastify are free. There's so many great things. One of the things that we did on TeacherCast a couple of years ago is created an entire channel called Educational Podcasting Today, which is the name of our show. And the whole idea of it is, can you be a podcaster for free? And at the end of every show, we usually come up with the answer of, of course you can podcast for free. Yeah. So it's interesting because the way that you're describing that, it almost seems like being a professional podcaster is around connecting to your audience, but being an educational podcaster is focusing on critical content. Am I getting the it's, right view there? It is. It's all about the curriculum. And, you know, and as a tech coach, that's important. It's what can we do to connect the students to the curriculum? How do we give them that authentic ability to, you know, at the top of Bloom's taxonomy is teach the skill back to us. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we were doing this year in our eighth and ninth grade social studies curriculum is we're taking the concept of a five paragraph essay, introduction, three bodies, closing, and we're putting that into a podcasting platform. Three kids do the intro. One kid does the does each of the middle paragraphs, and then the three kids come back as a group and do the closing. And you've got a nice twenty minute long podcast, but really, you've just taken that concept of a five paragraph essay and you twenty first century did a little bit. That's excellent. So you said you mentioned a, a few tools on your podcast, and you said just get started with some screen cap casting apps or maybe mm -hmm. some other audio recording apps. Just, just for somebody that's never jumped into it, what would be a couple of tools you might suggest as of today? Well, uh, my favorite tool, I've got two favorite tools. One of them is a screencasting app called Screencastify. It's mm. free. It goes right into your Chrome browser. It saves everything to Google. Um, you can make up to a 10-minute video or audio recording or even a web tutorial. It is absolutely perfect. Um, I work with students as low as third grade on that, and we do that all throughout high school. And, and Simple podcasting, there it is. Another tool that's, that's brand new that came out this year is called Synth, S-Y-N-T-H. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find it over at gosynth.com, but essentially they're, they're making bite-sized podcasts. It's a four and a half minute long audio or video file, and it is, it is the future of educational podcasting. And, and you know the other one that I always recommend, it's not really podcasting, but it's audio video bases, of course, Flipgrid. You know, the idea that a teacher can ask something and then a group of teach a group of students can answer it. Not really a podcast, more of a video system, but synth, flipgrid, screencastify, screencastomatic, these are just simple free applications that are available both on your tablet, your mobile, your Chromebook, your Mac, every every platform you can do this. There's no reason not to bring audio and video into your classroom. That's awesome. Now you've talked really, and those are wonderful tips that, that I think people can use directly in the classroom around that educational podcasting thing. But as people are looking at you, right, look at your setup here. You look like you're ready to give the, the broadcaster and drive time radio here, right? So mm. you've, got, you've got a rig there. What, what are kind of the tools that people need to be, to be that more professional podcast, right? The other side of the, the, other side of the fence. You, you gave some great examples for the educational side. What are the key ones you need for the pro side? You really just need a recording device. You know, I always say start off with your iPhone or with your iPad, right? Like any device out there has a recorder. Um, if, if, if you're looking for free Evernote, you can open up an Evernote, hit the record button and record yourself in it on your phone, on your tablet, on anything. And the cool part about that is the audio goes up into the cloud and it syncs across all your devices. So often when I'm in a hotel or when I'm at a conference or when I'm having a meeting with somebody, I'll record my stuff into Evernote 
and it syncs right up. A good pair of headphones is not needed. Your Apple earbuds have microphones on them. So you can do something for free, really, really easy. Um, you know, if you're looking to, to purchase equipment for your school or for your house, you can get a mic around 50, 60 bucks. You can also get a mic for 500 bucks. You, you can get them anywhere in between. But, you know, for the longest time, my mic was 50 bucks and I plugged it right into my computer through USB and I was building podcasts left and right. So you, you don't need to make any huge investment. I see way too many times people start say, I want to be a podcaster. What kind of equipment do I need? I'm like, right. just just make good content. Oh, that's such a good tip. But you do, you do kind of mention something here critical that is something that you've given me as advice in years past. And this is, this is sage advice that I've taken with me wherever I've gone. And you've said that for your, for your viewers, they can handle if the video fails, right? If the video yeah. doesn't work out, that's not that big of a problem. Blurriness, there's some challenge, but they won't, they won't put up with bad audio. Right. And you've just talked about microphones. You've just you, you kind of talked about the headphones and getting there to the content. Why is the audio so important? It's what you're listening to. I mean, it, it, most people consume content in their car or or on the move. Mm -hmm. And, you know, think of how many people listen to podcasts or listen to YouTube videos while driving. They're not watching it. They're listening to it. So audio quality always um is more important than video quality. A lot of times, even with podcasters, we'll put our podcast up on YouTube just by putting a bumper on top of it. It doesn't have to, you know, we could be sitting here in our, in our pajamas. It doesn't matter. The audio quality is what's going to force it. Um, you know, Matt, I don't know if you know this, 44% of the population have said that they listen to podcasts. 33% of the pop, the, the total population have said that they are avid podcast users, meaning that they listen to a podcast at least more than two or three times a month. It's a huge number and it's growing. There's over 700,000 shows on Apple Podcasts and it seems like every other day now, some huge podcast network is being sold for hundreds of millions of dollars. What do they all have in common? Audio. Everybody wants to listen, listen, listen. So, you know, uh, if you're gonna spend any money on anything, a, a simple microphone works much more than I'd be saying, go out and buy a hundred and some dollar webcam. That's that's a that's a really good tip, um, but how do you deal with? I mean, again, back to the quality elements, right? You've talked about the audio being so important, but the quality has to be criti has to be critically important. How do you solve some of the audio problems that we often have when we're doing these these sorts of podcasts? I mean, you and I have run to these things in the past where mm -hmm. something breaks down, or you get you get bad, uh, you know, you get feedback, or you get you know bad volumes. How do you correct those things? Because as you said, the audio is audio is king when it comes to, to doing online videos or online podcasts like this. You know, there, there's not a, a real clear or even a good answer for that. I always say when you're starting off with podcasting or any kind of activity like this, find that mentor, find that somebody that you could work with and, and have those questions answered. I, I, I can't remember how many times I went live at a conference or on a location and you get there, you set up something, and you know you're going, you might even be paid to be there. Something doesn't work. Who do you call? Where do you call? And, and th there is no substitute for experience, right? Like, you know, like, you know, we, we just had a little audio thing here. I had to go flip a, quick, a cu couple of quick switches here. The easiest way to do it is just keep messing around with your equipment. You're going to know how to do it. It's like having a car. I don't, you know, the, the more you, you, you tinker with something, you're going to learn how to do that. But I always say find a nice mentor. I mean, that's why we started educationalpodcasting.com here. If anybody wants to learn about podcasting, we are here for you. And we're happy to start, coach, build anything that's the podcast or web design related for everybody. So let's, let's, let's shift a little bit. We've talked a lot about tools. Let's talk mm -hmm. about content. And you spoke earlier about how valuable the content is and how you always have to come back to the content. But you have this ability to speak with a level of passion and articulation. How do people get to that? How do they know that they are talking about something important and how do they get the message across in a way that's engaging? Are, are there any tips that you have for that? The, the biggest tip that I have for anything is just have good conversations. Focus on your guests. What do I need to do to make my guest look, sound, act awesome, right? right? And, and again, this, this all comes from my background in conducting. You wave your arms, you jump up and down. You're the only one that doesn't make a sound. Your job is to make that orchestra look good. And if you make that orchestra look good, 
you realize it's really not about the orchestra. It's about the composer who wrote it and he's been dead for 200 years. We're all there to celebrate this person who lived a long time ago in another part of the world. Your job is not to be the center of attention. My job is to bring the best out of you, right? Very much like being in the classroom. My job is not to be the sage on the stage. My job is to make the students look good by achievement or by projects or by whatever it is. My job is to be an advocate for that content, for that piece, for the topic. If you listen to a show of mine on Flipped Classroom, I want you to come out learning about the Flipped Classroom and how wonderful it is. I don't want you coming out knowing Jeff's a great guy or Jeff did this or, you know, the other day Jeff's kids were here. That Nobody needs to know that. It's about celebrating what's amazing and really, you know, boosting that content, making the guests look good. I, 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 I kind of do the Larry King School of Podcasting. I don't know if you've heard of this one, but um, Larry King, love him, right? He's been doing this for a thousand years. His whole MO on being the Larry King live guy is nobody shows up to the, nobody tunes into the Larry King show wanting to watch Larry King. They'll tune in to see Tom Cruise. They'll tune in to see the president. They'll tune in to see, but maybe the next day, they're not going to show up to see that guest. They're only going to tune in for the topic for the guest. They're, but the point is they're not there for Larry King. On the other hand, you're going to watch the Ellen show every day because it's Ellen. And I kind of have to balance all those things out. But I, I kind of do most of my shows from the Larry King side. They're not here for me. They're here for the topic, for the content, for the guest. So let that, let that person shine. That's excellent. So now let's talk about, let's go back to the educational podcasting thing and maybe, maybe close out with the same kind of a um, question around the students. How do you get them to shine? How do you take your Larry King approach or your Ellen approach with the kids? Because there has to be a curricular, almost a pedagogic approach to having the kids understand how to tell their story using podcasting. How do you get that message across? Well, the trick is that the curriculum comes second in that, in that regards, right? Yeah. So if you think about it in the beginning of the year, um, we want the kids to do something with a podcasting platform. So we take the traditional, hey, Matt, tell me about yourself. Tell me about how was your summertime? Do that in the podcast and platform. Do that in Screencastify and Synth or something. You know. And basically what you're doing is you're getting the kids to, to talk about themselves, to be excited, to show something on the screen, a picture, a beach ball, a, whatever they've done. Show it off. Get them to push every single button. Get them to do what the application is. I always set this up so that way we're doing it on a Thursday or a Friday. Like I'll teach the thing on a Thursday. I'll have them do it on a Friday. Cause you know that if the assignment was go, go home and tell me all about your trip or about the latest Avengers movie or anything like that. Monday, when they come back, there's a good chance that the whole entire class has done the assignment. Then you hit them with the curricular topic. And now that they know how to use the tool and they've taught themselves how to use the tool, now on Monday, you just walk in and you have a full entire, a, a full entire week of teaching curriculum. And oh, by the way, we're going to do a podcast. Remember how we did that last, last week? We're going to do that now featuring, you know, Greece and Rome or something like that. I love that. So and that's, that's I, I'm a big a good... fan of teach somebody something without them knowing that they're being taught something. That's excellent. And that works especially well for kids because then they can own that process and there's there's almost an affective element, the emotional learning piece where they own that process. That's spectacular. Right. Well, hey, Jeff, you've given us a million great tips here. Um, I think people are going to have to watch this two or three times to get to really pull these items out. But I know you have a lot of other things to offer through the TeacherCast site and through connections to you. Can you, can you um, let people know how to get a hold of you, how to connect with you? Well, Matt, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the show. It is great to be here. Anybody that wants to find me, you can go over to teachercast.net. Check us out on Twitter over at teachercast.net slash Twitter. Leave me a voicemail at teachercast.net slash voicemail. And as we say on at the end of every single show, guys, keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students. That's great. Hey, thanks, Jeff, for taking the time. So those of you who don't know, it is almost 10 o'clock in New Jersey in the p.m., and of course, I'm in Singapore, as you all know, so it's almost 10 a.m. the next day in the future for me. So, Jeff, uh, wonderful, wonderful interview. I really appreciate it. This global conversation has been absolutely amazing. Thank you for taking the time. Thanks for sharing your sage advice. And for everybody at the bottom of the screen here, do me a favor. Um, connect with me through, through um, YouTube here by subscribing to the channel 
or connect with me on Twitter. My handle is at Matt Harris EDD. And we'll talk more about educational podcasting. I'll put links to some of Jeff's uh, amazing materials. And we'll just continue the discussion. All right. Well, Jeff, have a wonderful evening, everybody. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.